Hey guys, Ryan here, Blue Collar Fishing. Figured I'd do a video and show y'all my new kayak. Here you can see it behind me. Um, it's a new Canoe Frontier 12. Um, I've set it up beyond anything I've ever seen done for kayak catfishing at all. I've never seen a kayak set up the way I've set this one up. I'll go through it, show y'all how it's set up, what I've got, what I've done, why I've done it. We'll, uh, we'll start here at the front and work our way back start up here on the front you can see i've got the motor guide xi3 i've got the long shaft i swap it out back and forth with my boat um it's got the gp import gps which is also linked into my a lawrence 7 ti this one is linked into the motor only so it's only for mapping and i'll have an avionics card in it and then that one is also linked to the one back here on my rod rack so I can steer my trolling motor with either of those graphs. It's linked to the motor. It is costly to do that, um, but it's well worth it because these XI3 remotes, if they get wet, they're done for. Next thing be my never lost anchor. I haven't got the anchor rope and stuff set up on here yet. That's the only thing I think I have left other than two rod holders. Um, that anchor saved me during the last tournament. Um, I was using my motor for spot lock. Spot lock stayed engaged. I couldn't get it to come out because the remote messed up. I had to use my anchor to anchor. And I was in like three, three and a half mile an hour current. It was actually dangerous to anchor in it. But that anchor alone contributed to me winning the tournament. So the next thing I guess would be uh, I've got a rogue fishing lanyard. I'm not associated with them at all or anything. I just thought that was a th cool thing. You hook your phone in it, it tethers it to the kayak. We've all lost a phone in the water at some point or another. After that, I guess we'd go to the uh, Millennium Seat. That's a big, big thing. I've not, not seen that done on a kayak before. You can see I've got it, uh, it'll swivel. I can turn it around frontwards to go to my spots. It's hitting my net. I didn't realize that, but we'll figure that out later. Um, I've got a GoPro mount on it. I just took a RAM mount, mounted it on there, and then I've got a little GoPro arm with that on there. I've still got to mount my uh, charger block down there on the seat so I can have it charging and running full time. I've not seen anybody do that. The seat will slide forward and backward the length of the kayak. I don't think I'll have to slide it. I've got plenty of room back here. That board, that uh, musky bumper board will be up front. Those boards will be out in the water, so open up a lot of leg room. I've got a rod rack on the back of it. Let me move some of this stuff. Of course, the monster's sitting there right in the way. Um, I built a rod rack. You can see I've just mounted it into the track mounts with bolts, and I was actually going to cut these off at an angle like that. But then I realized my measure board sits on them perfectly. So I've got a full rod rack, just like a boat. Got six monster rod holders on it. I've got the, the 535 talons on there. I like those. I can actually take my rods. You can see I've got them all spread out now. That's for dragging or anchor fishing and casting out. I can actually take these rods and turn them down like this and suspend fish. So now they're at, that, that's a five degree angle, which is perfect for suspend fishing. Got my Muddy River rods. Um, another thing I did, I've got 7,000 Abu Garcia reels on this side, the catfish specials. You'll notice over there, I put pin uh, squall 20s on there. But if you notice the, the reel handle is on the wrong side on those. Those are left-handed retrieve reels. So if I'm sitting in the kayak, this would be from my point of view here. So if I'm sitting in the kayak and I reach and grab a rod, I'm gonna grab with my right hand on this side of the kayak. Everything's already ready to go. Same thing on the other side. If I reach and grab a rod, I'm gonna grab it with my left hand. Well, now my, my rod's in the right hand, I can just start reeling. I, I put a lot of thought into that. I'm, it may confuse me and I may end up changing that. I don't know. Um, these are all set up. I'm going Sunday. You can see I've got my Carolina Lake weights, dragon weights on there. Uh, again, Muddy River rods, the Blue Cat rods. Um, what else we got? Oh, I got my net over here. Y'all saw a minute ago, it hit the seat. So if I'm sitting in my seat, 
I can reach and grab that net with my right hand. So even if I've got a fish on that side, I can just hold the rod in my left hand, reach over and grab my net, and I can net my fish. Um, got my cast net in a bucket up here. It'll eventually be in this hatch up here with the uh, anchor. And then I've got these, uh, Yak Gadget makes these. There'll actually be monster rod holders on these for suspend fishing as well. So in theory, I could run eight rods. I'll probably never do that, but I've got to see Steve and get some more rod holders. Um, Y'all know he needs some prayers right now. He's recovering from some heart surgery and he's been going through some major stuff. But uh, come on back here. I've got my other GoPro mounted here. That's just kind of a quick thing I did. I put it in the ratchet straps that hold my Onyx lithium batteries in there. I've got a 50 amp up front that runs both graphs. And I'll eventually have my phone charger and GoPro chargers wired to that as well. And then I've got a 100 amp hour here that runs nothing but my trolling motor. Um, that's big important. I can swap from one to the other pretty fairly quick on the water. You know, it, I just have to undo the nuts and rewire it. If my trolling motor battery starts getting dead, if I'm in the hydros, my trolling motor battery starts running dead on me, I can swap it out and they link to my phone so I can see what they're at. So if my trolling motor battery gets down to like 20%, I'll swap it out with my graph battery, run my trolling motor off the 50 amp and my graphs off the 20% left on the 100 amp and that'll buy me another two, three, maybe four hours up in the hydros. Um, I can run 10 hours up there, which is plenty long enough. It'll wear you out being in the hydros that long anyway, but um, I've got, come off of that, I've got my drift sock, must have for dragging, drifting in the lakes and stuff. I've got a paddle here. Y'all, most of y'all know I don't never carry a paddle. Well, I learned this past tournament, you better have one. Uh, That'll just kind of be wherever it lands out of the way. I've got a, uh, I think this is Yak Attack makes this, and it's a uh, transducer mount. So I've got my transducer mounted down here, and it comes up, and it's on a ram ball mount. And then I've just got a plate that the ram ball goes on screwed down to the kayak there. It's fully adjustable. Like, you can just grab this piece of arm right here and bend it any way you want to. So that, that makes stuff really simple on there. Um, I've got it all on a jet ski trailer. It's just PVC bunks. I don't know if y'all be able to see under there or not, but. And then uh, that's about it. I got my PFD, you know, I'll always have it on. Got the monster net, I showed y'all that. That's about it, guys. Um, if anybody has any questions on putting a kayak together or anything or some questions about fishing or whatever y'all can hit me up on facebook messenger um i don't check instagram messenger or anything very often but uh hit me up on facebook messenger i'll try to answer questions and stuff if i don't get back to you right away i don't check my uh non-friend messages whatever message requests or whatever people that ain't friends with me very often but i will get back with you i'll uh, probably be seeing you guys on the water probably be making a video sunday i think i'm going to chase skips tomorrow be on Taylorsville Dragon uh, Sunday if everything works out right. We'll catch you guys in the next one.